So we have a question here that is circular motion with strings. And as we know, strings involve the tension force. And we can then do some force analysis to basically work out what we need to in the question. So we'll take a look at this question, which says that you have a 0 0.45 kilogram ball, attached to the end of a cord, which is rotated in a circle of radius 1.3 meters. And this is a horizontal circle. Importantly, the surface is frictionless. And we would also assume that the cord is massless as well and cannot be extended and not elastic and so forth. Now the question asks, if the core breaks, if the tension exceeds 75 Newtons, what is the maximum speed we can rotate the ball? So when you're approaching these questions that ultimately are really a force analysis question, well, as we discussed, your first step really is to really draw a diagram to make sure you read the question, draw the diagram, make sure you really understand what's going on. So let's take a look at a top view. This is a top view, recognizing that you have a horizontal circle. You have a ball, which is a mass of 0 0.45 kilograms, going around in a circle. Of course, that means it's undergoing circular motion, which of course also means that, well, it's undergoing centripetal acceleration, centripetal force. So it's got a radius of 1.3 meters. It's got a mass of 0 0.45 kilograms. There is no friction. So if you look at this sort of from the side, basically you've got a string that's kind of going around kind of like that on a ball, which is just going around on the table, okay? That's basically what's happening. Not a perfect circle, but it's just to get you used to the idea. So now you have an idea that this ball is going around this circle from the top like so, or in other words, from the side, kind of like going into the page and then around and out of the page and, and so forth on, on your table like this then we need to start considering our forces. So your free body diagram. As usual, you just think of your ball. You know the mass is 0 0.45 kilograms. And you just think what forces act on this ball? And you run through them. First thing is gravity. Well, gravity will act on this ball. We'll call that the weight force. It's going down as usual, but it's on a table. The table is stopped, it's in contact with the table, so that suggests there's a normal force. It's a flat plane, so expect the normal force to go up, like so. So you've got the wave force going down, you've got the normal force going up. They should balance each other out because the ball's not going anywhere. And then you actually also have this string over here. So that's also your tension force. So you understand that the ball is kind of going around in this direction in a circle. So we can sort of undertake analysis vertically as well as horizontally. Now, vertically, it's probably quite clear and not really needed for this question, but vertically, if we take up to be positive and down to be negative, then we will have the conclusion that normal minus weight equals ma vertical, which the ball's not going up or down, so it's just zero. So your normal equals your weight. Nothing really needed for this question, but it's something we can kind of do. More importantly for us is the horizontal um, forces. We've not really found any forces except tension horizontally. So taking the left as positive towards the center as positive, I'm going to end up with a net force of tension equals ma. And we need to now think of what is happening to this ball horizontally. And the thing is that it's going in a circle. And because at this particular point, the string is pulling it in towards the circle, it must basically supply, as we've said before, for anything undergoing circular motion, the force required 
to keep it in a circle, which is a centripetal force. In other words, mv squared over r. So we've now concluded that in this scenario, my tension equals mv squared over r. Okay, t equals mv squared over r. All right. Well, with that in mind, then, we probably don't need this diagram anymore, so we'll get rid of it. So now we recognize that the tension force equals mv squared over r, and I'm choosing to use mv squared over r and not mr omega squared because, while I could use that, the question asks us for maximum speed, which is v. So I'm going to just keep using that. So the tension is a maximum. I mean, you could use your string can give smaller tension, it can give bigger tension. But of course, as you swing the ball faster and faster and faster, or else equal, the central force will get bigger and bigger. And that has to come from a tension. But the question is saying that you have a maximum tension, you can't go over 75. So let tension equal the maximum tension, which is 75. Let your mass equal what it is, which is 0 0.45, and your radius equals 1.3. We can then work out what the maximum velocity is. So the maximum tension must equal, well, your 0 0.45 times the maximum velocity all squared, all over 1.3. So your maximum velocity all squared is just 75 times 1.3 divided by 0 0.45. meaning it's 216.6, 216.6, meaning that your Vmax is then approximately 14.7 meters per second. And that, given the constraints of this question, that is, your tension can't exceed 75, your radius is 1.3, and you've got a mass of 0 0.45, then that means you can only go at 14.7 meters per second. If you were to go faster than that, say for 15 meters per second, then this will just break and your ball will just fly off into the distance. If it's slower than that, then the tension force will just give a lower tension, the amount that's required, okay? But if you were to rotate really, really, really fast, so fast that you're exceeding so if you were to rate really fast, and let's say at this particular point, the string breaks. So here's your string in the center. Your force is now so fast because you get faster and faster. Central force is greater than 75. So your string breaks, no more string. That means your ball will no longer have the central force at all because the string is broken. And that means your ball will end up just going straight due to inertia. So in other words, the ball will go like so. It will rotate around faster and faster. Get here, string breaks. And then there is no more force pulling it into a circle. So it will then just move in a straight line due to inertia. So as we've demonstrated, when you do these questions, you basically need to understand what's going on, read the question, and then draw your diagrams, as we did. Once you've got your diagrams, then that will allow you to then decide, OK, what are your forces? Once you have your forces, do your F equals MA, except this time your A is, or your MA is your central force in, in one of the planes. And then you need to think of what's happening in the other plane. In this case, nothing is happening, so A equals 0. And that's basically just how you do the question.